So you can see that I have changed the topology a little bit and I have added an extra rudder here, rudder 7. And per your vision, rudder 7 is not in any VRF. It has only the global routing table. I'm going to show you the configuration so far, the configuration that I have created between router 7 and router 1. And then uh, what I'm going to do is to make sure that router 7 is able to reach to 100, 100, 100, 100. So what you need, as a matter of fact, is to make sure that some of the routes, or in my case, in this specific route, can be leaked into the global routing table and then advertise to router 7. So going to router 1, what I'm going to do is to show IP protocol. You can see that um, I have EIGRP1 set here. EIGRP1 is the protocol between router 1 and router 7, and it doesn't have any VRF set on that. So if I just want to show the running section of section router EIGRP, you can see that I have added the loopback interface, also the network between router 1 and router 7 to this, and show IP EIG EIGRP neighbor says that I am neighbor with uh, router 7. And also one more thing that I have set here is in the interface between router 1 and router 7. So if I show running section of interface uh, Ethernet 1.1, you can see that I have set a summary address, EIGRP, between uh, router 1 and uh, router 7. And I have set almost everything to be sent to router 1. So this is going to be the one which I am sending to router 7. So if I go to router 7 and show again IP route, now you can see that this route, the summary address has been received here. Also, I have some things here. For example, let's see. I need to see router 1's this network, 1111, in router 7. But because we have the summary address here, it is kind of uh, suppressed. But we can still ping it, so if I just try to ping 1111, you can see that the ping is quite successful. Now, what I need to do is to configure uh, route leaking. So let's start by doing the first thing. What I need to do is to create a policy-based routing. And this policy-based routing is going to be applied to this interface between router 1 and router 7. Ethernet 1.1 on router 1 is going to receive a policy-based routing. In this policy-based routing, I'm going to set everything that goes to 100, 100, 100, 100 to be set in VRF. And I'm going to give this interface's IP address as the next hub. So everything that goes through router 1 from there to router 6 is going to be changed into VRF. Then it is going to be sent to this interface and this interface is going to, you know, set the next uh, destination for that. So you can see that we need a policy based route in here, a route map, which I'm going to create right now. This route map is going to have an access list, and in this access list, I'm going to set any to any. It doesn't really matter what, but you can be more specific and say just one of the networks, for example, is able to do that. But I'm going to set this to any any, and then send it there. Also, one more command which I need on Ethernet 1.1 is IPVRF receive, because I just want to make sure that uh, things from of green can be received on this interface. Okay, let's just start the configuration. For this, what I'm going to do again is to go to router 1. And let's clear the screen first of all. On router 1, I'm going to create an access list. So I'm going to create access list, let's say 100. And I'm going to permit IP any, any, like I said. I'm not going to be so specific, of course, I need to go to configuration mode and then create this command. Okay, now that I have created this access list, let's create, let's create a route map. I'm going to create a route map. Route map is VRF to 
underline global so it's going to have a permit and I'm going to match it with access list you just type match IP address and the access list is 100 and what I need to do is to set the next hub but here because we are using a VRF on the other side I need to type IP VRF and then the name of the VRF is green and then the next hub the next hub is 10166 and hit enter this is the route map that I am going to have so the next phase is to go to interface Ethernet 1 1 now that I am here first of all I need to set the policy map IP policy and we are using a route map the route map name is VRF to global so I just paste it here also like I said I need to receive the VRF so I'm going to set IP VRF receive and the name of the VRF which I am receiving from is green so this is the interface uh, configuration on router 1 so almost everything is done here what I need to do is to go to router 6 because router 6 doesn't know the way back to uh, router 7 I need to add an uh, a static um, IP route as a matter of fact this is going to be set on router 6 so on router 6 what I'm going to do is to type en conf t and then I'm going to set a route back to 10170 which belongs to router 7 255, 255, 255, 0. And I need to send it back to 10161. This is a network which uh, router 6 is connected to. So I hit enter and almost everything should be done. Now what I need to do is to check my configuration. Can I ping from router 7 to 100, 100, 100, 100? If I just go to router 7 and try to ping 100, 100, 100, 100 now you can see that the ping is successful and everything seems to be fine of course router 7 is not going to receive any route because it has this router 1's global routing table seems like this and there is nothing here but everything is done using policy based routing so this is how you leak routes between different VRFs or from VRF to global